think this might be a slightly longer video. Hello, I'm Rebecca and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Rebecca, I'm a knitter and a knitting podcaster and I am based in Scotland, on the east coast of Scotland and this is just my little corner of the internet where I chat all things knitting, my knitting plans and lots of yarny goodness and today is no exception. I am filming my winter makes. I have 10, technically probably 10 and a half patterns which I would like to make over the next few months. I know we're technically still in autumn, it's November, but I'm ready for the, the cold festive months ahead. Um, yeah, the clocks have gone forward here in the UK. No, they haven't. The clocks have gone back here in the UK. Um, the weather's just got a little bit colder and I'm looking for a comfy, cosy knit project and knitwear. So that is what this video is intended to be. When I think about and when I was planning this video, I had to think about well, two things really, what I consider to be a good winter project, but also what was really good to wear during these months. So it became a kind of question of process and product. So when I'm thinking about process, I was wanting something which was maybe a little bit more complicated. I was looking for cables, I was looking for fur aisle, I was looking for something which I could really get invested in. The nights are getting longer and darker and colder here and that is what I would ideally want and need to fill my time. And then the project, I am looking for something which is really cosy, which is really comforting and just all around nice to wear. Um, so that is what, the, those are the questions I asked when deciding and narrowing down these projects. I have yarn for a few of these. I looked through my stash because I have a, fair, a fairly sized stash and I do have lots of beautiful yarns and as, as nice as it is to buy more yarn to add to the stash, I felt like, I'm not on a yarn ban, this is by no means, but um, I would like to start using my stash that little bit more. So most of these yarns are straight out of my stash, have been there for some time. Some of these patterns I don't have yarn for and in those cases I am just going to chat about what I intend or what I would like to purchase in order to make these. So that's the plan. There's a combination of sweaters, cardigans and then hat scarf socks. Um, yeah, so I hope it's a source of inspiration. Um, this video, it might be a little bit early for some people, but you know, it'll it will be here when you are ready for your winter knits and your winter plans. Um, yeah, before we get on into it, I would just like to say a huge, huge thank you to you all. The response and the love and the kindness that I've had on my first podcast episode, which I published a couple of weeks ago, it's been it's been wonderful. It's been it's above and beyond what I could have ever expected. I was really really nervous to put that video out into the world. It felt like a big step. It was a big step. Um. Yeah, but the kindness and the love that I received from all of you, all of you watching, I can't thank you enough. In community is such a wonderful wonderful place on the internet. There's so many lovely, genuine people and for that I thank you. I, from the bottom of my heart, I, I appreciate it so much. I appreciate all of you watching, commenting, subscribing. Yeah, it really does mean the world, so thank you. Yeah, so let's jump on to my winter knitting now um, and start with some sweaters. So I've tried to choose patterns which are size inclusive. I think it's really important to 
knit size inclusive patterns and especially when you're sharing when I'm sharing them it's something that I would really be quite conscious now that I'm chatting on social media about patterns as well and it's really good to support designers that do have size inclusive patterns so that's something really important that I look out for when choosing these patterns so instead of just listening to me read off numbers from each of these patterns and their bust circumference and size ranges I will just add it on the screen as I chat about them just so it's it is highlighted as we go through these patterns so my first pattern that I plan to make I will pop all the all the photos on the screen as normal but my first pattern I plan to make is the clear sweater a clear raglan by Laura Penrose. I have my notes here so that's, that's what I'm looking at. This is a top-down raglan pattern. It has beautiful cables going all the way down the body front and back and then plain stockinette sleeves. There's quite a few options with this pattern to customise it and make it a bit more suited for yourself which I really really love. You can have just plain cables but there is also an option to add bobbles as well. Um, when it comes to the hem, you can have a split hem or just the regular hem. You can alter the body length so it's a slightly, slightly longer, more comfy, casual garment. Or you can have it finishing at or just above your hip. Um, there's two necklines as well a folded collar or a higher turtleneck so I really appreciate when patterns and pattern designers think about this and add on all these extras just so it is more more personal and more suited to your body and your body type and your preferences so this yarn recommends Phil Killarna Peruvian Highland wool and I do have some of this in stash Although I've never knit with this, I bought this, I think, with the eclair in mind because I have 13 balls. They're 50 grams each and I have 50, uh, 13 balls of these. And this is in the colourway Cinnamon Melange, which is actually the same colour that Laura has one of her snaffles in. It's this lovely brown, marled colour and it's incredibly soft. It's the same meterage as Cascade 220, which I absolutely adore. Um, and I think it's just going to be a lovely, comfy, cosy make. I think this pattern with the cables and the bobbles will be a bit of a yarn guzzler. I plan just to do the cables, not have the bobbles, um, to do the folded collar neckline. And I'm still a bit undecided about the hem and the body length. I think that's probably something that I will decide as I'm knitting. Depends how much yarn I have left. Um, yeah, I'll probably start the body, finish the sleeves and then just knit the rest of the body pretty much until it runs out. If it's past my hips, I'm likely to do a split hem just because I prefer that that fit um, and if it's just above or slightly on my hip I'm more likely to do just the regular hem. So yes I'm, I'm really excited about this I think it's a stunning pattern I think it came out the very beginning of this year it's just a classic cozy jumper and I love it. I really do. I don't think it gets enough hype. Um, but yeah, that's the Eclair Ragland. My next sweater project that I have in mind is the Wilk Haven sweater by Emily Williams. This is a pattern which I don't think gets enough exposure. I saw Julie at Black Isle Yarns made this sweater in her own yarn and that's the first time I've seen it and the only place I've seen it since. 
but this is a stunning stunning drop shoulder fair isle sweater it's a modern take on the traditional shetland fair isle designs it's got a really lovely geometric color work through it and it's knit top down in the round it's got a really nice casual comfy boxy fit which i think is perfect for this time of year really comfort really comfortable and another thing i really liked about this pattern was it's size inclusive but and a lot the when when talking and thinking about designing it's all averages and a lot of times your bust circumference doesn't match your bicep circumference when it comes to putting in the numbers and averages across the board. And so this pattern comes with three sleeve circumferences. So you can knit the pattern to your, your bust size, but then you can customize the sleeves to make them smaller or wider, depending on on what you need which I think is a really nice touch and I haven't seen any other or haven't knit any other patterns that have included that and I think it's been really well considered and thought out by the designer yeah I just think it's a really really good a good thing and more patterns should do that so this pattern yeah the idea is that it's a modern take on a traditional Shetland Fair Isle jumper. It's meant to be, or it's designed to be quite a straightforward colour work pattern. I think looking at the, the photos, there's no more than two, color, two strands in a round, I think, although I haven't looked into it too much, which makes a bit um, your management that little bit easier. And uh, yeah, I am fairly new. I've not done much colour work. I've done maybe two or three projects in colour work. It's been okay. I need to work on my gauge a bit. So the swatching will be, a few swatches I think will be had here. Um, but yeah, I'm, re I'm really looking forward to this pattern. I'm really excited about it. And the yarn I am using I posted this on my Instagram when I first received it. This is Black Isle Yarns Shetland 4 ply. When I was thinking about this pattern, I knew that a more rustic wool would probably be best suited for colour work. So Shetland was probably what I was going to go with. And in the summer I had the opportunity to go to Julie's studio and chat with her about her yarns and see what she had to offer and she had this sweater as a sample in these colours and I just it was beautiful it was one of the nicest sweaters I've seen and I said to her that's what I want and so she didn't quite have the yarn I would need so she said she would do a custom dye for me and the exact quantities for my size so hopefully reduce some yarn waste as well and it did not disappoint so I have two skeins in the natural grey colour so undyed I believe I have two skeins of indigo yeah that's showing up pretty true to to life it is a really nice got a lot of depth to it this blue yeah love it and then i have one skein of just an undyed cream color and one skein of i think it's called harvest gold it's a really, really interesting colour. It's trying to say this end is probably more true to 
horse it is. It's, it's got really deep. I think it's dyed on a, a, a darker natural base, so a grey. It just has so much depth and yeah, I really love it and I'm really, I love it so much I'm actually quite nervous to, <laughs> to knit with it because it's so special. It's, it's Shetland wool and every time, I've knit with Shetland wool once before, I made a Copenhagen cardigan in Shetland wool and it's lovely, I, I love it, it's, it is soft but this and you hear a lot about Shetland wool being really scratchy, really rustic, hardy sheep. But this, I would say it is just as soft as this, Phil Kalana Peruvian Island wool. I don't know how it will feel when it's knit up, but in the scheme, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I think Shetland wool can sometimes get a bad rep for being really rustic but this this is wonderful and I said to Julie this this does not feel like Shetland wool or what I've heard about Shetland wool this this doesn't add up and it's to do with the herds and the flocks that she gets her wool from they're all local and she knows the, the farmer she meets the, meets the sheep and the sheep are really well looked after and it's it's to do with that just the care and attention that these sheep sheep get one of the flocks or the small holdings that she she got the yarn for this wool from is one of the is uh it's from a lady who lives really close to my my hometown and i had i I was lucky enough to meet up with her and meet her sheep so it just makes it that little bit more special. I'm from the highlands of Scotland, very close to where Julie dyes her yarn. So yeah, this jumper is going to be my, my home jumper. The sheep that I've met is dyed and it's all natural dyes as well from near and around the Black Isle. Yeah, it's going to be a special make. I think because it's quite, it's not a really talked about pattern, I would, or I'm planning to make a swatch from swatch to finished product video on making the little cave and sweater. So if that's something you'd be interested in, um, yeah, that's what I'm planning on filming and I might wind it up today even. Yes. The only thing about this sweater that I'm really, really nervous, other than the colour work, is that it is steeped at the armholes. And now the thought of cutting into my colour work jumper, who makes me a little nervous, to say the least. I've done afterthought heels and things where you cut, you know, you're cutting into your sock, but um, it's just a little sock and it's a big colour work special jumper. I don't know how it's going to go, um, but I will hopefully document the process and you can come along with me when I do come to Steaking for the very first time. So that is the Wilt Haven sweater. The next sweater, or the next two sweaters, I don't actually have yarn for, but I thought I would chat about them anyway. The first is the Storm Sweater by Petite Knit. I'm sure you've all seen this. It's a Petite Knit pattern. It's a classic, oversized, comfy, textured drop shoulder. And it's got, um, I think it's 26 centimetres I've got down here of positive ease. So it is roomy and it is comfy and it is perfect for lounging about during the cold months. I think with this I would go for a size small and I would still have quite a bit of positive ease. Normally I knit a medium with petite knit patterns but because of the huge amount of positive ease that there is 
I think I will go down and still have a decent amount of ease but it wouldn't be like swallowing me up. I like, what I really liked and was attracted to this pattern over say the Moby sweater which I was considering including but I like the Storm sweater slightly more because of the horizontal stripes throughout its different textured almost bands and I really liked that I think knitting it it would be very moorish and just get to the end of the stripe or just one more stripe and it would just I think it would go a lot quicker than say the Moby which is just a lot a lot of work I'm not saying the storm sweater isn't by any means but I think it would be that moorish and I would get more instant gratification from from it so I as I said I don't have yarn in my stash this yarn recommends Sanders Garn Pure Gint I have not used Pure Gint I've heard um, mixed things about this yarn. It is, it's a Norwegian, 100% Norwegian wool. It's going to be rustic just by that description. And I don't mind a rustic yarn, but when I'm investing in a sweater, I'd rather choose a yarn that I love, especially for a big oversized comfy sweater. I want it to be a bit more comfortable, a bit more soft. So I could try the Pure Gint and see how I get on, but I'm more inclined actually to use Cascade 220. It's a slightly finer yarn compared, compared to the Pure Gint, but it's not, it's, there's, there's not much in it. And I think I would just play around with my gauge. Um, I tend to always have to size up a needle size when I knit petite knit pattern. She's a continental knitter, I am an English knitter, so my I am a bit tighter when it comes to gauge. So yeah, I, I'm more inclined. I like Cascade 220 for textured um, designs. I think the yarn shows up the texture really, really nicely and it's lovely and soft. So yes, I would probably go with that. And I really like the gray version that she wears or her sample that she's made. I really like that mild gray. It's got a lot of depth to it. It's just a classic, classic color. And that's what I'm more inclined to use. Yeah, go for like a, a darker gray not quite charcoal but um yeah I'll hopefully add some some photos of the schemes that I have in mind so that's the storm sweater and the final sweater that again I don't have the yarn for but I would like to cast on is the stick season sweater by Rebecca Clo and this pattern came out this week as I'm filming this but it'll be a week later for you watching and it's just stunning it's a really classic design with a modern take and I think that's what I'm craving with these sweaters this time of year is the the cabled jumper the fair isle but this is a take on a very traditional Gamzy jumper it is a drop shoulder and it's got textured uh, a textured yoke a broken rib yoke and it's got really nice details where the drop shoulder is and it's got full seams that work in pattern from the collar and into the ribbing as well which I really appreciate it's something which as knitters I think we all appreciate these really really clever design details it's just really clever and she's a really talented pattern designer so 
I'm not surprised that this pattern is any different. This pattern is designed in Explore Knits Earthy DK. And this is an American American brand. I'm not sure where in America. And I don't I actually don't know how easily available it is. They probably do ship internationally. I will have to have a look. It's a hand dyed yarn. And the, the colours the samples are in are absolutely stunning. My plan for this would be to use Knitting for Olive's Heavy Merino. I've used it for my field sweater, I have a little bit more behind me and yeah I think it's, it's a beautiful yarn. The quality is amazing. I love it so it would be the perfect match. And again it's really good for texture. So in the yoke, yeah, I think it would be a really nice, a really nice yarn choice. I like the rust colour, which Rebecca has her sample in, and Knitting for Olive have a very similar colourway, again called rust, um, which I like. But I do have a lot of red jumpers, like the one I'm wearing. This is the Semper Sweater Bag Knit Pro Girl, and... The yarn is Nervous Fibre. So yeah, I do have a lot of that in my wardrobe. And I have a lot of brown in my wardrobe. So I'm really, I think I would knit it in, they've got a, a dusky olive. So it's a slightly darker green. Again, it's just, it's just a nice color. It's slightly more unusual. And I think it would be really nice. It's it's on the darker side, but it would be still light enough that you could see the texture in the yoke. So that's my plan. And a kind of the point five of this video is the stick season hat. It's 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 so nice. Um it's got that broken rib texture, um throughout the body of the hat and then the, the bit that I really really like about this hat is the decreasing. She's designed it so that it's decreasing in pattern and you get this wonderful like circular texture decrease and it's it's clever. So my plan for that is to use the knitting for olive heavy merino again. I might buy a skein two skeins extra and make the hat in it or when I'm placing my order maybe I'll choose a different colour who knows yeah Rebecca has done a fantastic job on this and I should have said it's called the stick season sweater because it's inspired by Noah Kane's stick season there's a song he wrote called stick season I hadn't heard about it before Rebecca talked about it. I absolutely love the song. It's about the time of year in Vermont or possibly New England um, when the leaves have fallen from the trees and just before the before snow comes, the trees are just bare. And that's what I think she's achieved with this texture. So it's really nice. It's nice to know where a designer gets their inspiration from and yeah, it's lovely and the proceeds of the hat she's donating to the Vermont there was really bad flooding in Vermont and I think it's the flood relief so all the proceeds are going to that which is wonderful and all the more reason for me to buy the pattern so yeah so that's the end of my my sweaters I have two cardigans First will come as no surprise, it's the field cardigan. I made the field sweater two months ago and I chatted about it a lot in my last podcast episode so if you want to know more about that, that is where to find it and shortly after releasing that, the cardigan, Camilla Vad released the cardigan version and it is equally as stunning as the sweater. 
So the day it came out, bought the pattern, ordered some yarn. I ordered eight balls of Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the shade Dark Ochre. Again, I think that's coming out pretty true to life. It's over here is probably a bit more accurate. Yeah, it's just a stunning deep golden colour. And it's not something which I have in my wardrobe, but I really like. My, one of my favourite songs is Fields of Gold by Sting and the thought of having a, a field barley cable sweat, a uh, cabled cardigan in a golden colourway. It would be my Fields of Gold cardigan and I just love the idea of that. So that is my next cardigan project. Again, I will probably have to alter my, my gauge a bit like I did with the sweater. That's okay, but because I've used it before, my sweater I'm sure can act as a, a giant swatch. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to casting this on. I also have some buttons, which I bought. So I bought this from Beautiful Knitters in London and I ordered some buttons as well, but I don't have them. One moment and I'll get the buttons. So I got these buttons and these are the buttons that I, I ideally would like to use with them, to use for the cardigan. These are, excuse the crackling, the plastic. Get that. These are, Merchant and Mills speckled. <laughs> so they're in an olive colour, but they've got like a slight uh, lighter speckle through them. And I really like them. I think they're 16 millimetre. And I just thought, that with this, it would just go really, really well. Now the pattern calls for nine buttons. They only had six in stock. So I bought the six and I keep periodically checking to see if they've got more in stock and I can get my last three. Otherwise my options are modify the pattern and the buttonhole placement so I can have six buttons instead of nine or choose different buttons. But until I cast it on, that's not something I'm going to worry too much about. But I really like these buttons and maybe Merchant and Mills himself will stock them. I'll have to have a look and figure things out, but yes. Fields of Gold Cardigan by Camilla Band. So my last cardigan pattern, I don't have yarn for but it's the June Cardigan by Kadri. And this pattern is, it's a drop sleeve v-neck cardigan. It's slightly oversized. I wouldn't say it's cropped, but it's got a shorter body. And yeah, it looks, it looks like a comfy throw on cardigan. You could dress it up or just wear it to lounge around in which I really like. The, the yarn that the pattern suggests is Cardiff Cashmere Brush me Brushmere. Yeah, Cardiff Cashmere Brushmere. Which is a little out of my um, budget, which is fine. I would love to try Cardiff Cashmere one day, but for such a large garment I don't think this is the one to be investing in. So one of the test knitters for this I was looking on Ravelry they used Drops Alpaca. I'm pretty sure held double which I think would be really nice. I think Alpaca would give it the softness but also a really lovely drape which would just be really 
which would be ideal for this cardigan. So it would be cosy, it would be comfy and quite flattering because of the drape. So that's what I'm inclined to use. Um, alternatively, Drops have brought out a new, a new yarn range. I think it's called Drops Daisy, which apparently is meant to be a bit of a dupe for Sana's Garn Double Sunday. So I could use that and then either hold one or two strands of mohair to get gauge. I could have to play about a bit with my swatching and figure things out. I don't have any mohair in the stash and I'm probably most likely to use Vogelana Tilia. That's my favourite mohair. Well, my favourite snake for all of, but uh, Tilia is a little bit more um, budget friendly. So yeah, that that's my ideally that would be my comfy, cosy cardigan. The field cardigan's probably a bit more, not dressy, but smarter. I wouldn't just wear it for watching, chilling out, watching the telly. So yeah, it's a nice, a nice, it would be a nice addition to my wardrobe. So there are all the garments. I mean, in an ideal world, I would get all of these knitted, but the reality is that I probably won't. Um, but that's okay. I, I probably will be knitting these into the early spring, so there's no pressure. Um, so the next couple of projects are accessories. The first is a scarf and I have yarn for it. It's called an Italian Autumn Cowl. There's also a scarf version and it just is a free pattern on Ravelry, so I feel okay talking about the construction in a bit more detail. It's a garter stitch cowl, and every couple of rows, there's eyelets. It's really simple. I think it will knit up really, really quick. I think it will be a good gift knit, although I don't really fancy knitting a scarf as a gift knit. It seems a bit more of a slog than say a pair of socks but that's just me but yeah it looks like a really comfy throw-on scarf I have a lot of nice scarves which are probably sometimes I feel a bit they're a bit too special to wear just for hopping to the shops so this a scarf like this would be a really nice addition to my wardrobe and I have four skeins of Sanus Garn Cos in my stash. I'm not sure what this colour got a really nice lace detail in it. Um, it looks super comfy and super cosy. It is, but I will pop it on the screen because it's just numbers. Um, and it's like a, a brownie grey. It's really nice, it's got a really lovely halo not sure if you can see that, look at the, the fuzz and it is 62% alpaca, 9% wool and 29% nylon so that's the alpaca, that's what's giving it the fluff. Um, so it's a blown yarn so it's got a almost tube of nylon I'm not sure if you can see that. I see it better. So it's like a tube of nylon and then the wool and the alpaca fibres are blown through it. So it's a really, really lightweight yarn. You get... What's the meterage? 50 grams, 150 metres. Um, it'd be really nice in a garment. But I just think it would make a really nice, snuggly, oversized, lovely garter stitch cowl and the eyelets just give it a little bit more interest. It's a free pattern. An Italian knitter, I think she has a podcast here on YouTube as well, so it would be nice to support her. Yeah, that's the first accessory and the only scarf, actually. And the next 
I've mentioned the stick season hat, but another hat I would like to cast on is the Muscle Burr. Um, I've made one Muscle Burr before, I really liked it. I found it a little bit more of a slog than, say, the Oslo hats. It's the long tube, it feels sometimes like it's taking forever. But I really enjoy it, I think it's a wonderful fit. And it's a nice hat, so it's probably more a product rather than a process than this one. But I have a couple of yarns in stash that I might use. So the first, I got this back in March at the Scottish Wool Producer Showcase in Perth. And it is a hand-dyed four-ply four fingering weight yarn, 400 metres and 100 grams, 100% Cordial base. Um, and it's by Nervous Fibre, who is a yarn dyer that's based in Glasgow. And it's lovely and soft. It's a no nylon sock, so I could use it for socks, but I think it will be really nice. It's such an interesting colour. The colourway is drink, which is pretty accurate. It's a Scottish word for pretty rubbish, wet, cold, it's not very nice weather. So yeah, I think it would be make a lovely hat. So I would probably hold it single stranded to make the muscle burrow. So yeah, I just think it would be a lovely addition to my hat collection. And my other option for the muscle burrow hat is to hold this double. And this is the lamb. La Mana Moderna, which I got from knit.co.uk on sale. I'm not sure if it's still in stock, but this is a combination of 70% merino wool and 30% cashmere. So it's incredibly soft and it's in this like dusky dark blue colour, almost petrol. It's really nice. It's lace weight, it's 335 metres and 25 grams. So it's really fine. So I would probably hold two strands together and knit it on quite small needles, I imagine. Um, and I think that would give a really, really nice muscle burr hat. Really luxurious with the cashmere, really soft. Yeah, quite nice. So, so the two more patterns. The next is a sock. I would like to make the Christmas pudding stocks by Stone Knits, Charlotte Stone. She does incredible colour work sock designs and the, these are no exception. They're really nice, they've got Christmas puddings, it's almost like a band around the leg and then there's a tiny bit of colour work just for the toe. So it's not too colour work heavy and I feel like this would be a nice dip my toe, no pun intended, into colour work before I go on to the Wilkhaven sweater. Um, I love the idea of making a Christmas jumper, but I don't love the idea of only being able to wear it at very specific times of the year. So knitting Christmas socks seems like a decent compromise. I can wear them throughout December and then put them away and they'll be ready for next year. Um, yeah, so I didn't have any yarn really in stash for this. I have a lot of hand dyed yarns which I pick up at festivals, you know, the odd skein. But I didn't have any which were really suitable for colour work or were solid colours. So I saw this as an opportunity to really try out and test commercial sock yarns. I haven't used commercials but I think I've used West Yorkshire spinners but outside of that I've not really tried so I thought that this would be a, a good opportunity. So for the main colour of brown I had Huntington's Valley yarn. So this was this is going to be for the main colour and it's like a really dark brown burgundy, it's like purple to it, it's really interesting 
and this is in the colourway 0038 Merlot. And I thought that was quite a good match to what Charlotte used in her sample. And then another Huntington's Valley yarn is the, the white. I've caped these up because I'm really quite keen to get going on them. So these are 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. And this is in the colourway Natural. They're really, really soft. They seem to have quite a lot of, I don't know, like give and bounce to them. They do spring back quite a lot. Imagine that's the, the super wash. Yeah, they're incredibly soft. Probably the softest socks, sock yarn I've had. Softer, definitely softer than hand dyed. Yeah, I'm interested to see how they knit up and how they withstand wear. Um, and then, for the rest of the colour work, I had some merino. This isn't sock yarn, but this is going to be for the, the background of the Christmas puddings. If that makes sense. And so there won't be any hard wear on this, so it should be fine. It's 100% superwash merino, and this is the Along Avec Anna 4-ply merino in the shade June. Which... It's, it's an interesting colour, it's quite, it looks quite grey on camera, in some lights it looks really pink, in some lights it looks quite beige, I really like it. My original plan on what I bought for this band was actually John Arbor and Exmoor sock in the shade Bibble, Bibble Bug. It was just, it was too close a colour to the Christmas puddings that they wouldn't stand out enough. So I'm going to save this and try this sock yarn maybe as a contrast heel and toe in a bit more of a vanilla sock just to see how this sock yarn wears and behaves. And then for the Christmas puddings themselves I've got this yarn. I'm not going to attempt how to say it. I think it's Am I right in saying it's German? Yeah. And this is in the colourway. Again, it's just a number. But it's in this brown, really natural brown. It feels quite dry, quite almost rustic. I think it's undyed. So this is for the Christmas puddings. And you can see what I mean, like the Christmas puddings wouldn't have stood out if I'd use this as the background for the colour work, but hopefully with this they will. And then for the green on the puddings, I have the same yarn but in green. And this is in the colour um, 02140. And this is really soft, so I imagine that's the dye that's softened, softened it up really nicely. It's a bit more vibrant than what's showing up on camera. It's like a in your face, Christmas green. I don't think I would use it for much else other than Christmas stuff. And finally for the berries on the Christmas puddings I have this which is a again a really bright Christmas berry. It's a lot brighter than showing up on camera. It's like quite a sickly red but this is the Lang Yarns Merino 150 and it's the Merino Extra Fine Superwash. It's in the it's in the colour, it's just a number again. Put it there. And yeah. 50 grams, 150 metres, so it's slightly thicker than the rest of them, but just for the tiny little berries, I think it'll be fine. It's really soft. And it's not it's not a sock yarn again, but where where it's placed on the sock, I don't think wear and the need for nylon would be a huge issue. So that's my Christmas socks. I hope to cast them on soon so I can start wearing them on the first of December. Um, yeah, and they'll give me some good colour work practice. The final thing is the December rope by Petite. If you watch my last podcast. 
at the very end I chat about my overwhelming need to make the December bow and I thought I would buy yarn especially for it. My plan was to go to the Glasgow School of Yarn Festival but we had really bad stormy weather here and trains and buses were cancelled so I didn't manage to get through so I I took it as an opportunity to look through my stash and use up some yarn. It's probably not, it needs probably a bit more than I would have normally in scraps. But I have like the old ball that's just on its own, which could, which could work. So I pulled out a couple of options and I'm hoping you can help me decide. So the first, I have two skeins of this. This will give like the fluffiest, the fluffiest bow. This is Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. It's really soft. I used this in my Cumulus blouse. So I have a couple of skeins left over from that. It's an, it's an iron gauge yarn. But I, I don't know. I suppose you could, but I think it would be fine to treat as a bit of a finer yarn than Aaron. Um yeah, so this this is option one. A really white, a really fluffy. Would be a nice winter, like snow. <laughs> It'll be a really nice winter bow. My other options are I have some leftover Longa Neck Anna. Again, I can't remember this colour. Can't remember. I'll add it on the screen. But it's this autumn, which would be a more of an autumn bow than a winter bow, but it's really nice and I just have this kind of like odd end of it, which could use up. Um what else do I have? I have a tiny bit of, this is, I say it's a light DK from Unaru Designs. I made my Copenhagen cardigan this, so it's a blend of Shetland. It's a blend of British yarn. I think that it's predominantly Shetland, but it's got this really nice pink and grey through it. And it's inspired by the Dawn over the Cairn Gorms. She does a series and every month is a new colourway inspired by the Cairn Gorms and what's happening in nature at the Cairn Gorms that month. So this I think was the April one. Was it April? Was it March? It was at the beginning of the year. So it's that like pink beautiful sky as the sun is rising. So this, I've got this, this could be quite nice. And I have a little bit left over of my Woolly Mammoth Fibre Natural Sock 4 Ply, 50% Chibia, 50% BFL. It's dyed in Northern Ireland and it's in the colourway Spring Bulbs. You're probably not going to get a very true representation with it being um, caked up. But it's got some really nice greens and pinks and nice flecks. I used this to make my cumulus flowers. I actually held these together and I call it my raspberry ripple jumper because the really nice pink flecks it just looks like raspberry ripple ice cream so that that could work I could hold these double or on their own I'm probably gonna have a few December bows it would seem and finally I have these I got these skeins, these are Bareford Originals. They're based in Edinburgh and yeah, so it's their own flock of sheep. So they, they grow their own yarn and then they naturally dye the yarn with their own plants. So it's all done within their their little farm, which I really liked and was why I actually bought this yarn. I, I love the story. I'm a sucker for tr 
like just knowing knowing where the, where it's come from and everything about it that's what i really quite easily buy into so this is four ply but it's a hundred three hundred and fifty meters per hundred grams and i have 50 grams of it and it's in this really nice green it's almost quite in like a nettle color really nice I have no idea what to do with this. I tried to put it in my sweet shop blanket, but the gauge, it just, it didn't work. So I ended up taking it out. So it could be a December bow. Yeah. And it would get it used up and into my stash and actually allow me to appreciate what beautiful yarn it is rather than it just sitting at the back of a drawer. So that is my winter knitting plans. That was quite a lot of chat. <laughs> um, I have quite a lot of knitting to do it would seem. I hope I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel inspired and ready for the cozy cozy months. I know I certainly am. Um, what can you expect from me going moving forwards? My next video will be a podcast, my November podcast and I expect that to be out in two weeks a fortnight after i release this one so i'm trying to leave a decent amount of time between podcast episodes just so i can actually get some knitting done and then it doesn't become too repetitive for you and i actually have something to talk about or something to share so that's why it's been a wee while um i'm hoping to film a christmas makes my gift knits for the start of december so the very beginning of December that should come out and then I will have my December podcast and I'm also planning on making a what I knit in 2023 video and that'll either be the very end of December start of January but um I wasn't sure about it but I have quite a few knits and I think because it's quite a, I'm quite a new channel new to all of this it's quite nice to show what I make, what my style is, so that if new people find my channel you can kind of see what what kind of a knitter I am, what kind of clothes I like to make. Um, so that's that's the main purpose of it. So this this will be in. I'd also like to chat about how they've worn as well, so how the yarn has has washed and how the wear, how it's worn. So that's a couple of videos coming up. Um, I also have a really really exciting announcement and I hate to be the kind of YouTuber that, that teases the exciting announcement but um, yes my next podcast so two weeks time I have a really really exciting announcement to share. I think it's exciting so stay tuned for that and yeah hit that subscribe button and you'll be the first to hear when my announcement is out into the world. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you've been knitting on while you've been watching this. I love to know. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Bye for now.